today on Excellent Leadership with Sam Adeyemi. Church was never designed to be tail. God's people cannot be tail. The church was not designed to be dragged around by society, dragged around by pop culture. The church was not designed to be a reactionary force, waiting for other people to seize the initiative and then praying that God should come and help us so they won't drag us all over the place. The church was not designed to be dragged around by the political system, dragged around by the educational system or the entertainment industry. Church was designed to be head. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 10 to 12. Let's go. So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build, houses full of all good things which you did not fill, hewn out wells which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, then beware, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Think like a CEO. This series is prophetic because I believe that God is moving us into the fulfillment of his agenda for us to expand the influence of his kingdom on earth. That's been the goal. That's been the plan. This planet should be a colony of heaven. And when I think of that agenda and the role of the church, and the church here is not a building, it's a collection of us that are children of God through the sacrifice of Christ. The church was designed by God to be head, not tail. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, the first 13 verses, Moses spoke to Israel. Beautiful verses of scripture. If you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, obey his commandments, which I command you today, the Lord will make you to be above all nations of the earth. And you'll be blessed in the house, blessed in the field, blessed in your going out, blessed in your coming in. Said God will bless the fruit of your body and of your ground. Said he'll bless you, bless your basket, bless your store. You will lend unto many nations, you will not borrow. And then he says, in verse 13 of Deuteronomy 28, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and you'll be above only, you will not be beneath. And we appropriate those verses to ourselves individually, as individuals. But Moses was speaking to a whole nation, a nation that was symbolic of the New Testament church. So, I see a picture of the church. A church that should be head, not tail. They understood what Moses was saying because they didn't ask him, what do you mean by head, what do you mean by tail? Obviously, he was using a bull or a cow for illustration. Definitely not a human being. We human beings don't have tails. No, we do. The scientists say that all of us have tails, that the tails are made up of four small bones. That's why we can't see them. So you have a tail. <laughs> According to the scientists, okay, it's not your kind that Moses was talking about. <laughs> it was a cow. But what you know is that the head is always in front, always at the front. The tail is always at the back. You know also that the decision making happens in the head. Where the head goes, the whole body has to go with it. So when Moses says to God's people, 
that God will make you the head, what does that imply? You'll be part of the decision makers. He said you won't be tail. They don't make decisions at the tail. The tail is dragged around. It's behind everything else. Church was never designed to be tail. God's people cannot be tail. The church was not designed to be dragged around by society, dragged around by pop culture. The church was not designed to be a reactionary force, waiting for other people to seize the initiative and then praying that God should come and help us so they won't drag us all over the place. The church was not designed to be dragged around by the political system, dragged around by the educational system or the entertainment industry. Church was designed to be head. That's where the creativity happens. In fact, the church was not designed to react to culture being created by other people. The church was designed to create culture. Because the creativity, the innovation happens in the head. The big problem is when we don't understand our calling like that, then the church becomes the slowest organization to change. I understand why. Because principally, the church deals with revelation. Revelation. So the reason why we don't change easily because, is because it is God that told us. Yes. It is God that said it. Fine. God said it. What is God saying? Revelation is progressive. Okay? So, um, as I share this, that's what I have in mind. And I sense that there are some huge opportunities ahead of us. Just around the corner. Did I hear you say amen? amen. I'm going to use Israel as illustration. Especially the move from Egypt to Canaan. We know one generation of Israel came out of Egypt but, but could not go in to Canaan. And Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 says, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to have come short of it. <laughs> Let us fear, so that what happened to them should not happen to us. We need to pay attention to that. Because of the adult generation that came out of Egypt, only two people made it in. God waited 40 years for a whole generation to perish. He buried them in the sands of the desert. That's amazing. So is it possible that there are things God should be doing now that he cannot do because we're not ready? Like Israel wasn't ready? That's what I'm concerned about. That's why this is important. So I've been studying, I've been researching, trying to find out what was it that stopped them from fulfilling the destiny that God had for them. The things that stopped Israel from entering the promised land still have the potential to stop us also. We need to bear that in mind. So, back to the church and the design. I read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 20 to 23. I love it in the Message Bible. Ephesians 1, 20 to 23. It says, all this energy issues from Christ. God raised him from debt and set him on a throne in deep heaven in charge of running the universe, everything from galaxies to governments, no name and no power exempt from his rule. Amen. Amen. Christ is king over everything. He is Lord over everything. And then it says, and not just for the time being, but forever. He is in charge of it all has the final word on everything. At the center of all this, Christ rules the church. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts 
by which he fills everything with his presence. Amen. So Christ is not here physically anymore. He expresses himself through the church and he wants to rule everything. The church is not peripheral to the, church, to the world. The world is not the main thing. And the church is just trying to peep in to what's going on in town. No. The church is at the center of everything. It is the world system out there that should be struggling to catch up with what God is doing through the church. Amen. Amen. The church is head. We're not tail. So I see huge opportunities coming ahead for us globally. Amen. They are global opportunities for influence. We need to prepare for them. We need to prepare for them. What stopped Israel from entering Canaan? I'll sum it up this way. It was lack of capacity. Lack of capacity on two dimensions. Lack of capacity to dream. And two, lack of capacity to manage resources. Lack of capacity to dream, lack of capacity to manage resources. So let's take on the dream part today. If you lack capacity, your blessing can overwhelm you. That was what happened to Israel. It was the blessing. That was what God prepared. And we know that in Numbers 13, they got there, and the very blessing God prepared for them overwhelmed them. He said, ah, ah, yeah. The place is like God said it, but the place is so big, it swallows up its own inhabitants. <laughs> My dad he used to work for government, and we, were, we used to live in Niger State then. Then he said he had this uh, staff member that just joined his team, and the guy grew up in a village in Niger State, and he would just go on and on and on about Bida. Bida is a city in Niger State. That was the largest city he had seen in his life up until that time. So he would go on and on about how there were so many houses in Bida, how there were so many people in Bida. Ah, if you see the roads in Bida, 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 so my dad said, no problem. So one day my dad was traveling to Ilori for business and took him along. When he got back, to Mokwan, I just did. He, he began to talk about it, Laurie. <laughs> ha! <laughs> hey, the people, the cars on the road. De, 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 de. And then not long after that, my dad was coming to Lagos. <clears throat> <laughs> and took it, brought him along. So my dad said <laughs> their meeting was at Marina. And it was a, a pickup truck, you know. And when they got to Marina, uh, everybody got down. The man stayed in the vehicle. <laughs> so uh, my dad said, calm down. He said, no. <laughs> calm down, what's going on? He said, no. <laughs> All those tall buildings, we're making him feel dizzy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I understand what it's like. What those Israelites must have felt. Because God said he was giving them large, beautiful cities, cities walled up to heaven. They saw the people there. They said they are the sons of Anak. They are giants. So, so then they said, the land swallows up what is in the That's a lie. If it swallowed up all the inhabitants, how come you saw somebody there? 
So I'm just saying that when you don't have capacity, your blessing can intimidate you, overwhelm you, stress you out, scare you. You know, I always uh, describe the story of the uh, young man with the frying pan. Yeah. The guy that went to fish with a fishing hook and he would catch fish and then use a stick that he brought from home to measure the fish. If the fish was shorter than the stick, he threw it in his bucket. But if the fish was longer than his stick, he threw it back in the river. So there was a friend of his that had been watching him for a while. So the guy now came to him and said, wait, I've been watching you. You, you throw the big fish back in the river, you keep the small ones. There must be some deep philosophy to what you are doing because it's not normal. T tell me, wh what's the philosophy behind what you are doing? The guy said, there's no deep philosophy anywhere. I have a frying pan in my house. I've used this stick to measure the diameter of the frying pan. So any fish that is longer than this stick is too big for my frying pan. That's why I threw them back in the river. Yes. The human mind functions exactly like that frying pan. How many times have you thrown away an idea, a suggestion, even if it was a joke, just because it was too much for you? Somebody says, hmm, the millionaire. Come out. Milawiti. I'm looking for food to eat. You're talking about Milawiti. Just leave that. What did you just do? You just threw away an idea, a suggestion that you could be a millionaire because it was too big for the frying pan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Help me to tell the person sitting next to you, expand your frying pan. <laughs> Most people are unable to overcome the strongholds established in their minds through their upbringing and experiences. Most people are unable to overcome the strongholds established in their minds through their upbringing and experiences. Whether you realize it or not, what you've experienced in life, where you are coming from, the environment you grew up in, shaped your thinking. And the Bible says, with the building layer after layer, what you now have in your mind are strongholds. Israel grew up in slavery. Israel grew up not owning anything. They were owned. They were the property of Pharaoh. Israel grew up in mediocrity. They lived in the poorest parts of the city. They lived in the slums, the poorest parts of Egypt. And now they were going to be owners. Their frying pans could not take what was coming. This is very important. So Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Why don't many people's lives change in a radical way? Because changing your thinking is not easy what you've been used to all your life, you will always continue to compare what you have now or what you have in the future with where you are coming from. That's a big challenge. And that will make small things to look big to you. Where God is taking you is not anything like where you are coming from. You have to get ready to, to lose sight of the past. God said to Abraham, arise, leave your country, leave your father's house to a place that I will show you. What does that suggest? I'm not even going to try to compare where you are going to where you are. Just leave where you are. I want you to, I want you to completely lose sight of it. You would have gone far before I show you the new place where I'm taking you to. Press reset in your system. <laughs> Get out of the default mode. 
erase your old programming. So Paul the Apostle says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 5, the weapons of our warfare are not man-made, they are mighty through God to pull down strongholds, casting down imaginations, imaginations, thoughts, ideas, concepts, mindsets, and strongholds create lack of flexibility. They limit our capacity to dream. That's the tough part to it. Oh. Mindsets. So thank God that we have weapons that through God are mighty enough to pull down the strongholds. God had to take on Peter the Apostle in Acts chapter 10. Because in God's agenda, it was time to move to a new phase. God wanted to reach Gentiles. Peter walked with Jesus when Jesus was here physically on the planet. Jesus did not allow them to go preach to any Gentiles. He said only the lordship of the house of Israel. Now that Jesus had resurrected, it was time for the Gentiles to receive the gospel. An angel appeared to a man named Cornelius. He was not a Jew in Acts chapter 10 from verse 1. An angel appeared to him. God wanted him saved. And God told him, send for a man. He gave him the name of Peter, gave him the address of where he was staying. The man sent for Peter. But before those people got to Peter, God had to deal with Peter. Or else the plan was going to fail. God knew that Peter did not have the capacity. He did not have the flexibility. You remember what Jesus said? Nobody pours, uh, Luke chapter 5 from verse 38, he said nobody pours new wine into old wineskins. He said the new wine will burst the wineskins. What's Jesus saying? We don't have a problem pouring things out from heaven. Our problem is with the capacity of the container. When you pray for something, what God is looking for before he releases it is your capacity to manage it. So there are a lot of things we've prayed for that are hanging in the realm of the spirit because we don't have the capacity to manage what we're asking for. Israel came right next to the very blessings they wanted that God promised them and their hearts failed them. So, God had to show Peter a vision in Acts chapter 10. It was filled with all kinds of animals. The animals, they were not permitted to eat according to the laws of Moses. God now spoke to Peter. He said, arise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, Lord, you know that I have never, be very careful with those, your I have never statements, because, because there are many good things you have never done before. I have never, you know I have never eaten any unclean thing, God says good. You know, God now said to him, what I have called clean, you should not label unclean. What else should God say beyond that? Is that not clear enough? I've changed my mind. I made the rules. For my new agenda, I changed the rules. Peter, eat this thing. It came the second time. He said, I have never, God took it up. Brought it the third time. Peter, we need you to eat this thing for our new agenda. <laughs> Some people here have bragged before. When, when you, maybe it's a pair of shoes that you saw and say, what? 500,000 error. Complete waste of money. <laughs> Even if I had that kind of money, shut up. Have the money first. Let's see whether you are going to buy it or not. It is not 500,000 naira for nothing. The value is inside it. 
Nothing is expensive. You only have people that cannot afford them. And if you cannot afford them in your mind, you won't be able to afford them in your pocket. Stop those your I can never statements. There are good things God prepared for you that you never did before. You need to do them now. Peter, eat this thing. God gave you the gift of your imagination, but your past experiences may fix your imagination. You may go into the future reacting to the past. And you are supposed to forget the past. Some of us don't want to lose sight of our old neighbors. How will you get to your new city if you don't want to lose sight of your old neighborhood? It is inevitable, sir. If you are going to go as far as God wants you to go, you will lose some relationships. Where God is taking you to is not anything like where you are coming from. It's bigger. It's radically different. And in that new place, the skills that you used to survive in Egypt will not work for you anymore. In Egypt, it was physical energy. It was physical labor that they did. But in Canaan, you will own houses. You will own wells. You will own vineyards. Uh, so it's not physical labor you need anymore. It is management skills. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ, everything in our minds, in our imaginations, everything that makes what God has provided look too big, makes them look overwhelming, everything that makes it possible for us to see other people prospering but not ourselves, the power of the Spirit of God destroys them now. And I prophesy for the person that is CEO already, heaven will show you God's agenda. Amen. It is prosperity with a mission. Amen. It is promotion with a mission. Amen. I prophesy in Jesus' name that heaven will expand your influence. Amen. Heaven will enlarge your heart. Amen. Receive new visions. Amen. Receive new dreams. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every painful experience we went through before that keeps controlling our attempt to dream for the future, today I prophesy healing. In the mighty name of Jesus, God turns your scars into stars, turns your tests into testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ.